Welcome to the dark stream, Vox Day, voxday.blogspot.com, and unauthorized.tv. So, it's been an eventful few days. Um, the legal team has been getting their response into the circuit court um, with regards to the, the Patreon lawsuit. And um, the big news, though, today... The big news is that our Vox Day was banned from Reddit. <laughs> That's a little joke there. I didn't know that there still was an our Vox Day. I've never been active there. My understanding is that it was uh, similar to uh, the the Reddit uh, thread about or the Reddit page or whatever it is, the Reddit subreddit about Owen Benjamin which is uh, just a bunch of haters and so forth. Um, anyhow, that was a joke. Uh, we're talking, of course, about the fact that YouTube has finally acted against Stefan Molyneux and banned his extremely popular channel. Now, this is not at all a surprise. Uh, I, I very much doubt that, uh, that Stefan himself is surprised I'm certainly not, and you know it was just a matter of time. And the reason that it was just a matter of time is that the um, is that he clearly signaled that he wasn't going to fight. Um, what we see time and time again is when people resist the. Whether, whether it starts with PayPal, whether it starts with you know, Patreon or, or Goodreads or, or anything else, then you have to stand up for yourself. Because all of these companies pay a lot of attention to each other. All of these companies have people that are um, moving from one company to the other. And... You know, I had talked to Stefan after uh, one of the deplatformings about, I don't know, six months ago or so, and I warned him about this. I said, look, if you, if you don't stand up for yourself, if you don't make it extremely painful for them, they're just going to keep doing it. You know, there's, there's no reason for them to stop. You're not going to convince them to leave you alone because you're a really nice guy and you don't cause trouble. They don't understand that. They don't view that as anything but weakness and potential submission. And so you know, your choice is only what ground do you choose to fight on? And so, um, if you if you're going to, uh, and, and the best ground to fight on totally depends upon your circumstances. You know, there are advantages in some cases uh, to deal with an arbitration if you've got the right setup. Uh, in other cases, court is better. It totally depends upon where you want to where you want to stand your ground and so that's why it's so important to not only build your own platforms but also make sure that you arrange it so that the battles that you're going to be fighting are battles that you can reasonably hope to win stocky angle said maybe he just doesn't have the fighting spirit well that's that may well be the case and if so so be it but you can't you can't be surprised you can't be um taken aback when people do what you are actually encouraging them to do by your refusal to to resist remember 
the enemies that we are dealing with not only view silence as consent, they view silence as violence. And so when you, um, when you don't resist evil, evil celebrates. Evil knows that they can push you around all they want. And that's why I, I always attempt to make sure that those of you uh, who are with us understand that conflict is the reason we exist. That's what we live for. We're not running from it. We head directly into it. You know, I was talking to someone today one of the one of the 72 bears and what he told me was really fascinating uh, the individual who was his process server told him uh, hey you know you should um, you should contact patreon uh, apparently they're having you know trouble uh, finding everybody to to serve them and so forth but um, they really would like to, you know, they don't really want to sue people. They just really want them to withdraw. And not a single person withdrew. And there are scores, you know, many, many more people who are not just willing to stand in the gap. There's many more people who are rushing towards this ongoing conflict. Now, there's a there's a great post on on the bear uh, by one of the bears on Social Galactic, and they said, uh, you know, I'm not going to pretend that I'm not uh, a little bit uh, concerned about about people, you know, about the the legal attacks on us. But you know, I um, I have confidence in the team. I have I have confidence uh, in everybody. And one of the dread elk said, just, just stand tall or just, just hang tough. We're coming. And they are in a big way. Some of you know uh, perfectly well what I'm talking about. Um, you know, so it's, you know, I don't, uh, wish for this to be taken as any sort of condemnation of Stefan. We, you know, if you're not a fighter, then it's good that you know yourself. It's it's good that you uh, focus on whatever else it is that you're, you know, whatever else it is that you're doing. But it's going to have ramifications. You know, our choice to engage in conflict when deplatformed, whether it was, you know, whether it was Indiegogo, whether it's Patreon, whatever, our choice to pursue conflict has ramifications too. Not all of them are pleasant. The enemy always gets a vote. You never ever go into the ring assuming that you're not going to get punched in the face. You probably are. You might even get knocked down. But you need to be confident that you're going to get up, that you're going to take the shot, and you're going to win. And once you start realizing that, yes, you can win, yes, we will win, then you know that you have the ability to stay there as long as it takes. And so um, you know, we are descended from a, a group of people who were some of the greatest fighters in human history. You know, 
for, for myself, I'm descended from American revolutionaries, Mexican revolutionaries, and an American Indian tribe that was not exactly unknown uh, or not exactly unwilling to engage in uh, military activity. And so it's important to understand that that's part of life. Strife is part of life. And we might enjoy, uh, you know, the time when we get to relax, the time when we get to just hang out uh, and take it easy with our friends and that sort of thing. But, you know, like the, the Bible says, there's a time for peace and there's a time for war. And we live in a time of war. And so the, the, more that, the, the more that conflict approaches us, the more eager we must learn to be for it. You know, I understand very well the desire to just be left alone to do your own thing. I am far more self-contained than most. I'm quite happy to sit here in my office surrounded by books and just to read and learn and think and write, you know. But the time comes when you can't do that. The time comes when you're not permitted to do that. You know, I've had a little bit more time to get used to this, going back to the, the whole kerfluffle about the now defunct Nebula uh, Award jury. And I was really astonished. I was really amazed by the way in which people created a problem out of nothing. What a lot of people didn't realize is that prior to the objections to my uh, being on the Nebula Award jury, I'd already been on it twice with no incident whatsoever. And I was on it the third time, no problems whatsoever. And yet just my otherwise unobjectionable presence on that jury was enough to start the whole process that eventually ended in the, um, whatever the, the leadership council of SFWA voting to expel me. It's fine. You know, I don't want anything whatsoever to do with that world or to do with those people. I was never really part of that world other than I happened to write science fiction and fantasy. But I never went to the conventions. I never hung out with most of the people. There were a few people that I knew that I occasionally was around. Um, Joel Rosenberg, Lois McMaster Bujold, Pat Reedy, uh, you know, that, that sort of Minnesota Inklings group. But other than that, you know, it wasn't my scene. It wasn't my world. And I'm glad of that because that world is a horrific, fetid swamp of a freak show, as we're seeing <laughs> practically every day with new revelations of, of this, that, or the other thing. Um, but the point is, is that, you know, that, that all started back in 2005. And so I've had what, 15 years to get accustomed to that sort of thing. That's why I'm quite calm about it. That's why I'm not worried about it, you know, but, but here's the thing, the time for day walking is over the time for keeping your mouth shut and hoping nobody notices you and that you can just get along. And I mean, that's, that's done. And so you're going to have to realize that the wicked will not leave you alone. 
the evil will pursue you. And what are you going to do? Are you going to cringe? Are you going to hide? Are you going to submit? Are you going to find others of like mind who are willing to stand against the evil, who are willing to fight and lock shields with them? You know, this is the time. These are the moments when the decisions have to be made. And it's not easy, especially not at first. But speak the truth. Don't let yourself dwell in fear of what might happen. You know, you're going to die one day. So here's your choice. Are you going to die a man or are you going to die a slave? Are you going to die standing in the light or are you going to die cringing in the shadows? And so, you know, the Bible says time and time again, don't fear those who can destroy the body. Don't fear those who can't do any more than take away your life. And if all they can do is, is take away your job, then find another one. There's always some sort of solution. And, you know, it, it's been interesting to see how frustrated the wicked get when they try to deplatform you, when they try to ruin you, and they see that all it does is make you stronger. All it does is make you more effective. Look at Owen. Owen got kicked off of YouTube. And now Owen is running stronger than ever with unauthorized. Stefan Molyneux can come back stronger too. He's got his own channel. He's got his own audience. He's got a bigger audience than Owen and I have combined. Stefan can come back and in a year's time be far more influential, far more anti-fragile, and far more influential than he ever was on YouTube. So this is not a bad thing. This is an opportunity. This is an opportunity for Stefan to take the step to the next level. And it's going to be interesting to see whether he does that or not. I hope he does. He's got my support. You know, some people have said, uh, just right now, do you think Steph will join unauthorized? No, I don't, I don't believe he will. I think that he will. Um, you know, Stefan's very, very independent, and he doesn't necessarily play all that well with others. Um, he likes to do his own thing, and so I fully expect him to set up his own thing. I wouldn't be surprised if he was already uh, more or less uh, ready to do that. I mean, if he can, if he wanted, if Stefan wanted to come to unauthorized, of course we'd be happy to accept him. You know, I like Stefan. Always have. And, you know, he, he's, he's definitely been... Um, as Mockman says, the more relevant question is, does unauthorized TV even want Stefan? Sure. I mean, it's it's not a... Um, yeah, and somebody said Stefan posted a streaming URL through his site already. Yeah, so he's he's going to be fine on his own. He's, he's going to set up his own uh, channel, you know, with uh, just like Gavin uh, and Milo have, have got uh, uncensored set up in a, a similar manner to an authorized. Stefan will set his own thing up 
and I expect that it will be uh, very popular and it'll be um, it'll be very effective and I hope it goes I hope it goes very well the lemon party says stuff was right for this good I'm glad you know that's the smart thing to do so um, you know but the key thing is to just get back up off the ground every time they knock you down and the more you do it the easier it gets Fubair says at what point will all the varied channel come back together under networks or group purchasing agreements I very much doubt we will there's no reason to you know we have our own technology we're happy with it um, other people are doing things their own way and um, you know decentralization is a good thing there's no reason why someone can't support whatever you know free domain streaming uh, and unauthorized at the same time you know I mean I don't know what the the minimum support level is for that but you know unauthorized is only five dollars a month you know, it's one fancy Starbucks coffee a month for you know hours and hours. I mean I have no idea how many hours of content we put up there a month but you know it's got to be several hundred of several hundred hours a month so um, the thing is conflict is going to find you now here's a here's a picture from um, the the webtoons comic that we just uh, finished um, <laughs> talking about evil coming in and finding you um, the the fourth episode of Midnight's War is called the etiquette of evil and um, we have some uh, vampire assassins popping up in the, the study of another vampire you know it's gonna come after you so be ready for it oh this is good news uh, off topic uh, got the meditations today it looks great even got an, a gasp of awe from my wife yeah it's um, I, I envy those of you who are getting them I, I'm not going to be able to get mine for several weeks at a minimum um, <laughs> the uh, <laughs> it was funny um, yeah the the whole that whole thing with that particular character was unexpected I'm not saying that I've never written myself into a, a comic before um, obviously there's a, a Dark Lord character um, in the alt hero comics but but that I actually wrote in this was not <laughs> this was not my intention um, that was the that was the illustrator uh, who's obviously got a bit of a sense of humor so um, <laughs> it was kind of funny uh, a friend of mine happened to uh, happened to read and said tell your wife to put on more clothes <laughs> anyhow um, does refusing to accept that it is a spiritual battle make you less effective in the fight I think potentially I mean I think that it makes it harder for you to understand what's happening you know I don't think that you're necessarily going to be less effective in any one thing but um, but overall I think so yes bit shoot says chances of other payments to become available instead of only credit card yes we are working on that um, Stefan's main dig is subscribe star minimum three dollars a month yeah so you know I encourage people to support um, one or more elements channels uh, that appeal to them you know the the bigger our numbers are 
regardless of what it is, the more effective we can become. And you're already seeing that. You know, and you're going to see a lot more. I mean, look, look at the way, look at how much things have changed in the comics world. You know, Arkhaven was getting mocked when we first came out with uh, Quantum Mortis and the first alt hero and the first Chuck Dixon's Avalon. Everyone was talking about how our art wasn't that good and, and this sort of thing. And what did I tell everybody at the time? I said, we're only going to get better. We're only going to get better. And now people are, are telling us that our art is some of the best that's out there. And they're not exaggerating. It really is. You can, you can compare that. You can compare the Midnight's War art with the writing, with the illustrations, with the coloring. You can compare that to any DC or Marvel comic and it may or may not be uh, as good as the very best, but you can certainly make a comparison without anybody laughing at it. Um, <laughs> they decided to place, replace the Mississippi flag with a new one. It was the last state flag in the U.S. with a Confederate flag. The civic nationalists said the world will take us more seriously now. Yeah, that, that's the sort of rhetorical nonsense that just is infuriating. The world takes the U.S. seriously for one reason. It has a lot of nukes. So, um, it has nothing to do, nothing whatsoever to do with, you know, the fact that, that, uh, the Mississippi legislature is kowtowing to Black Lives Matter or whatever. Um, more troublesome is MasterCard shutting down New Project 2. Uh, if the banks start picking and choosing which processors get served, that's going to break a lot of resistance to the agenda. Well, probably, um, except for you're forgetting one thing. What's more likely is that MasterCard will find itself going the way of of other unsuccessful processors who tried to who overestimated their power because the Chinese processors are coming soon. And you know what we're looking at now is on a global level the struggle between the uh, for lack of a better term, uh, Judeo-Anglo elite or Judeo-Yankee elite against the Chinese and the rest of the world that is following the Chinese lead. And the odds do not favor the converged former, you know, post-Western corporate world. They're likely to, to go down and go down hard. They're not going to win. And so, uh, you know, things never go in the linear direction that everyone assumes and expects them to go. Everyone looks at, at the social media giants and Facebook and Google and how they're you know, so influential and, and then, you know, the way that the, the credit cards can do this and PayPal can do that. But the truth of the matter is that they're going to, they're going to be broken. They're going to be broken by the Chinese. They're going to be broken by the Russians. They're going to be broken by the Eastern Europeans because all of the stuff in the post Western post Christian, you know, falling west, you know, falling former west, is going to stop working. We're already seeing that. What actually works better than it did 10 years ago? We have some new technology like smartphones, but all that's Chinese. You know, what innovation is coming out of Silicon Valley? 140 character Twitter 
I mean, are you kidding me? There's nothing coming out of there. You know, so uh, when you've got a society that is banning police forces and um, and occupying itself with blathering about Black Lives Matter rather than uh, paying any attention to their to their customers, no, they're not going to be successful. <laughs> Parable Pain says we're going to lose plumbing soon. Um, I like what Dance's logo says. I just hear the Who play when I think about the Judeo Yankee takedown. Yeah, the scourge of heaven is coming. Variable Pain says we're going to lose plumbing soon. Well, we've already lost the ladies' room. I suppose plumbing is next. Will China look to support a dissident right to accelerate the collapse of the liberal world order? I doubt it. Um, I don't think they'll need it. Why on earth would they need uh, to do anything? They already have a massive fifth column throughout throughout the states, Canada, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Brian Crimmins says, I anticipate tail risk hedging strategies paying off quite nicely as the empire falls over the next decade. I wouldn't because the system itself is going to break. Let's see. How soon till we see a Kurgan saxophone UATV channel? Probably not anytime soon. Karen took the kids, said Spencer got banned as well. Mommy's going to be so mad at having to give him pocket money again. Oh, they had to make it look good, you know. Uh, I enjoyed the article on ONS today suggesting that Marcus Aurelius was a medieval fabrication. <laughs> yeah, apparently, apparently, uh, what's his name, Francesco Poggio or whatever, uh, invented the entire, <laughs> the entire uh, Greco-Roman ancient history. I mean, it's it's really, I, I, I find... It wouldn't surprise me if some of it was, but that much of it, I'm, I'm dubious. Blue North Bear says, bald lives matter. <laughs> um, actually, I, I th what I thought was funny was that my prediction that, uh, that the best rhetoric for dealing with Black Lives Matter was to simply cite a Palestinian Lives Matter, and sure enough, <laughs> Uh, that actually got Black Lives Matter denounced as anti-Semitic in the UK. So, I mean, it, it's it's all rhetoric. It's all meaningless. It's all nonsense. If China puts our enemies in internment camps, I'll buy a Huawei tomorrow. They are, after all, unashamed nationalists. Yeah, I mean... I've said many times, if I have to choose between uh, the, the post-Christian, post-Western, post-American uh, evil that rules over us now and the Chinese, I'll take the Chinese every single time. I mean, at least we know that they have the ability to maintain a civilization. The people that are now the elite in the post-Christian, post-Western, post-American empire have no ability to maintain an empire, no ability to run it. They have no ability to even run a civilization. They're not civilized. They're functionally pre-civilized, functionally tribal. And so there's absolutely no chance whatsoever of not only Western civilization, but any civilization surviving that rule. Now, the good thing is that that's probably why it's going to collapse very fast and balkanize, and then civiliz uh, civilization will, civilized societies will begin to.
build up again. That's why the homesteading movement is so important. That's why the knowledge preservation movement is so important because people are going to need it. You know, the, the baby boomers broke the uh, chain of civilization that involved training your children in maintaining civilization. And so it's going to have to be relearned and that's going to be a long and difficult process. Caveman versus thanks, Vox, keep crushing. We will do so. Um, Black Coffee says, do you think that Russia will be expanding its territory within the next 10 years? Probably not. Would they be interested in the rest of Ukraine? No, they don't want the rest of Ukraine. That's what that's what's so funny is that that's they wanted the Crimea. Yeah, you know, they want the, the port on the Black Sea, but they don't want the the nonsense of having to deal with the Ukrainians. That'd be like saying, do you think that the US would be interested in expanding into Mexico? No. You know, who who wants that headache? Up oh, Chuck McDuck said, what is the chance of the collapse being as extreme as Rome or the Bronze Age collapse? Um, there's a good chance that it'll be as extreme as Rome. Uh, it, it shouldn't be as bad as the Bronze Age collapse. I mean, if you, if you follow socionomics and at all, you know, Robert Prechter's written on this. And if you take that model seriously, he's been predicting a, I don't remember exactly what the, the level is, but it's basically, he's talking about a civilizational wide, civil, civilizational level event. And I think that that's probably correct. Dr. Zuma said, where did you learn patience for those seeking truth? Is it tedious dealing with those stumbling while searching for the path? Um, not really. I, I have no problem with seekers. I tend to like and respect them. It, it's the people that, uh, it's the liars that I, I find uh, tedious and very, very difficult to be around. You know, the, the people who say things that are not true. Andrew Cannon Vox, could a country offer you wine in exchange for becoming their general? <laughs> well, uh, it would certainly make it more interesting. I always thought it was interesting uh, reading about the way that uh, the Duke of Wellington just absolutely refused to use Spanish troops. He just didn't trust them. Wouldn't pay any attention to them. Wouldn't use them. He was okay with the Portuguese troops, but he learned never to um, make any plans involving Spanish troops. I don't do the whole thoughts on so-and-so thing, so don't bother asking those. Uh, do you have any advice for someone feeling disheartened by those abandoning their sovereignty? Uh, don't put your trust in others. Especially don't put your trust in, in the rhetoricals. You know, they, they don't have any ability to make, uh, to make judgment call based on information. They're just responding to, to manipulation, emotional manipulation. Any thoughts on Spain in general? Uh, I'm a big fan of Tempranillo. Uh, I wish the <laughs> I wish the the people well, especially uh, in Catalan. Although I, I it appalls me how um, you know they don't go back to their roots, but you know insist on on clinging to their crazy leftism, but you know, it is their tradition. Did Christianity help in defining the nations? Yes. Is this message the opposite of what is generally taught among the West? Yes. 
Uh, professional, pr Professor Rachel Brown mentioned this in the Unauthorized History course. Yeah, I mean, most people just listen to what the modern churchians say about how uh, we're all one and there's no Greek or Jew, you know, there's no man or woman, uh, Jesus was a refugee, all that total nonsense. Uh, but that, you know, that's not Christianity. Do you think Northern Italy will break up with Southern Italy? Yes. Yeah, the whole, we're all, we're all God's children. Well, then who are the children of the devil? Is, is, is Satan their mommy? <laughs> you know. Yeah, so anyhow, that's all I've got uh, for tonight. Um, other than uh, somebody said that they received two meditations and they only should have received one. Uh, that can happen. If so, uh, shoot me an email. We'll let you know. Uh, we'll get, get you an address and tell you where to send it and um, find a way to compensate you for whatever shipping might cost. Um, and uh, thanks to all of you, and there have been a lot of you who have subscribed to the Castalia Library or the Libraria Castalia recently. And um, we'll have some new announcements on that soon. Uh, Dr. Zume asks, when you were asked a question, do you view it in an intellectual clean room or do you carry the baggage with the person asking? Uh, I usually view it, I, I, I want to view it and I'm inclined to view it in an intellectual clean room, but I've learned that I need to pay attention to the person asking it because a lot of dishonest uh, and, and pre-argumentative, you know, pre-positioning questions are, are asked for tactical purposes. They're, they're not honest. Ironically, when someone says honest question, uh, you have a pretty good idea that the question is not honest. So, um, all right. Well, thanks so much. Appreciate you tuning in. Uh, all the best to Stefan Molyneux, and I hope his new channel is extremely successful. Uh, I'm Vox Day, and this is The Dark Stream. <laughs>